Hey folks, it's E. Chip and Rob are out in the shop and we are beginning uh, the process of putting Dinah's engine back together. I want to introduce you to a new uh, YouTube website. Maybe some of you know about it. Uh, it's called Wes Johnson Services. And how I ran across Wes Johnson was I was looking for information on this engine particularly. This engine is a flathead engine 1930s through say 1960s technology made by Continental Motor uh, Corporation. Continental uh, went out of business making automobile uh, and tractor and industrial motors a long long time ago. They're still known uh, as, tel as uh, co uh, Continental Teledyne or Teledyne Continental um, and they make aircraft engines now. In looking for information on this engine online, I ran across Wes Johnson Services YouTube channel. He, just about nine months ago, published a series of videos on how he rebuilt this exact engine. Now his is a Continental F245, which is the more uh, recent iteration of this same motor. He was a valuable resource in my learning about this engine. Now this is like a piloting tool, it's a drift pin. He just, he cut it on his own lathe. And uh, Wes is a machinist. His channel's about fixing CNC machinery, lathes. He also works on engines and things like that. But uh, he made this little tool to help him when he was rebuilding that one. And he was very gracious to loan me this tool so that we can get the valve guides out of this block and replace them. This tool is just a piling tool. It's made to fit inside a valve guide and then be driven out uh, through the block of the engine. A lot of times this is done with an air hammer, which makes it easy. But in this case, we don't have an air hammer. And if I don't have to buy one, I'm not going to. So we're going to do this the old-fashioned way with this tool and this five-pound maul. And we're just going to smack at it until they come out. And then we're going to put the new ones in the same way. So stay with us. You can see this piling tool slipping down inside the valve guide, the old valve guide here. Make sure it's seated well. And then we're just going to smack it through with a hammer uh, until it comes out. Me. Something broke. What? I heard something hit the ground. That's yeah, probably a piece of the. Ouch! Oh, that hurt. Yeah, it's a piece of the. A little piece of the guide. It's from smacking it so much. I want to do one. Okay. <laughs> there you go. You did it! Where is it? Where'd it go? Oh, it's stuck in there. Is it? Yep. We can get that. All right, we certainly mushroom the head on that thing. <laughs> right there, too. Uh-huh. Mushroom the tip, mushroom the head. We can grind that down, flatten it out, and make it all pretty. The next step is going to be to smooth this engine deck and uh, get it ready to accept the new... Um, Get ready to accept the new uh, head gasket and then to clean the engine real well um, and then we also need to sand the crank and rod bearing journals and put it back together Robert. Okay. This is a cylinder head and as you can see Robert did an amazing job of cleaning this cylinder head up for us so we can measure it. We need to check this for out of flatness uh, to make sure we can put it back on. If we can't, it's going to either be ha it's going to either have to be machined or sanded or or something like that. Now here is a precision uh, machine straight edge, and I'm going to use this to check this for out of flat. We've also got a feeler gauge. This feeler gauge, I've got the three thousandths gauge um, set out, and as you can tell, that is really thin, really flimsy. So we can't have any spots on this that are greater, any depressions on this that are greater than three thousandths deep. So let's check it. Let's just try it diagonally here first. And we just want to check and see if the feeler gauge goes under this anywhere. It does there. Okay, so we've got a little depression there. And it, it easily goes under there. Um, same here. 
So, same here. Okay, we got, looks like we're okay here. Tighten this up. Okay. That's okay. But going back, we've got, here we go. Got this here, that just slides right under. That slides right under. So, okay, beginning to get some resistance here. Let's check it this way. Okay, here. So we get right about here. And it begins to just slide around. We got depressions right here. Here. Okay. So, as you might expect, it's a little deeper here in the center, um, in between these cylinders. That's kind of common. Let's check this out. Okay. Right here, we've got a bit of oh, all the way. Yeah. So we're a bit concave in the middle of the head, which is kind of normal. Okay. And there we go. Easily more than three thousandths. I mean, that thing just slid right in there. If it's any more than three thousandths, we automatically have to machine it or get it flat before we can put this back together. Now let's check the deck or the top of the block. Let's check the deck. Oh, yeah. It goes right under. Hi there. Doesn't go in there. Does there. Okay. So sort of high in the middle and low on the ends. Okay, so we've washed. I'm sorry, we uh, fin I finished sanding and uh, cleaning up these journals as best I could. I made sure that these uh, little oil galleys are clear and that they pass oil well without any trouble um you know we didn't get it perfect but we got them nice and smooth they can't really feel anything with my fingernails so that's sort of the uh you know the quick and dirty test uh not a lot you know the only thing here is on the front obviously where we have a great amount of thrust and movement uh and back here but uh you know for the most part it's going to be fine going back and we've got new bearings to go with it so washed it and uh, after we uh, sanded it washed it in warm soapy water and it's nice and clean ready to go to the engine so i'm going to cover it up because i don't want any contaminants getting on it and that's one thing about rebuilding an engine you want to make sure everything is kitchen clean i mean absolutely clean when you put it back together because the littlest bit of grit or sand or anything that may be left over that gets in there can shred a new bearing so i want to avoid that tighter there. I feel like it doesn't fit. It still fits there. Well, you can see light okay, through you can see that. The light. Uh -huh. It's getting a little tougher here. It's slowly. It's working. This, what I'm doing here is I'm taking the cylinder head and sanding the uh, the bottom. I've got two pieces of MDF. I've seen other people do this with a thick piece of glass or a, uh, a machine piece of granite or a uh, table saw which I do have but which is next door so I don't want to go get it but this works fine and you know uh, the fear would be gee that surface may not be flat enough to do, put a machine surface on a head well here we go here's a three thousand three thousandths of an inch feeler gauge and I cannot get it under this head anywhere so that tells me that pretty much my sanding service is nice and flat and machined well. Um, I put a uh, put the the backhoe's new battery on top of this to add a little weight while I'm sanding, and uh, you know it's not going to be perfect, but as long as I'm within about three thousandths of an inch on this, uh, putting it back, it's going to be just fine. That's what the overhaul manual says. So, just sanding it down, sanding it smooth. I did the same thing to the top of the block. And uh, so we have two nice mating services for the nice new uh, head gasket. The head gasket's going on is a real thick metal. So I don't think we'll have any problems as long as we install it right um, and torque them properly. So 
We just got through steam cleaning the engine. We've cleaned everything out with soap and water real well. Hit some things with WD-40 quickly to keep it from rusting. Now I'm going to hone the cylinders. Uh, hone is nothing more than, you know, sort of a sanding block that spins inside if you need to rough up the insides of the cylinders so that they uh, take oil better and so that the new rings will seat to the engine properly. So here we go.